If you're getting ready to apply to med school, maybe you're still a freshman in undergrad, but thinking about being pre-med, then this one's for you. We're talking all about letters of recommendation. What is a letter of recommendation? When should you ask? Who should you ask? What goes into the letter of recommendation? Let's figure all of this out. Make sure that you stay until the end where I will share how many letters of recommendation I asked for when I applied to med school, who I asked and why I chose those people specifically and what they could contribute to my letters of recommendation. All right, first let's talk about all the different types of letter of recommendation. The first thing you could have is just an individual letter that is written by one person that you asked and you can send that directly to the AMCAS application. The second is a letter packet. So this is something where you can ask a few people to write you a letter of recommendation. You send it to your school pre-health office and they package them all together into one big letter package that will contain anywhere from three to five or more letters of recommendation. And finally, we have the committee letter. So this is for schools that have a pre-health office that are going to write committee letters. In this case, what happens, your pre-health office will write a letter of evaluation for you and they will also package that with all of the other letters from your individual letter writers, put it into one big committee letter and send it off to the med school application. But no matter what, you're going to need individual letters from people that know you really well. So let's talk a little bit more about what goes into the letter. Now there are guidelines for letter writers, but basically anybody who can write you a good or strong letter of recommendation will have to include some of the following things in the letter. First, they have to include their relationship with you. That means how long have they known you for, in what capacity, were they your professor, were they a doctor you shadowed, were they your employer, or somebody you volunteered for. So they must be able to describe how they know you, how long they've known you for, and also what your social interactions with them and others have been. It's very important that they describe any unique or attributing factors that you might be able to contribute to a medical school that you end up at, whether that means you have some type of unique characteristic, attribute, a unique experience, any type of obstacles or hardships you've had to overcome, any types of diversities and adversities. So there's a lot of things that a letter writer has to be able to speak on, and it's a lot more than just grades or MCAT scores. When medical school admissions are reviewing these letters, it's very important that these letters describe the core competencies that medical schools are looking for. This can include critical thinking, problem solving, social abilities, oral communication, leadership, teamwork, your reliability, your resilience, your ability to lead a team, how adaptable you are, whether you have a growth mindset and you're looking to always improve, whether you're good at taking feedback, and also if you are oriented towards service for others and improving others' lives as well. Now the great thing is there's a great guide for letter writers by the AAMC. I'll link that down below. So if you know already who you want to write your letter, you can send this guide directly to them and they can basically use that as a reference of what they can talk about and how they can speak highly and provide a strong letter of recommendation. Now, when it comes to timing, there's three great things that you can do to make this a success. One is that you can ask your writers way in advance. So if you know that your AMCAS application needs to be submitted on June 1st, you need to ask these writers probably three to two months ahead of time because you never know how busy they are. If they're a professor, they probably have to you know, lead a class or create a class. If they're a physician, they have lots of patients to see and go to work every single day. So make sure you're getting yourself the best chance by asking these recommenders way, way in advance to give them the time to write a really good letter. Now, the second thing, once you've asked them to write a letter, the best thing you can do is to give them a false deadline. So remember, if our deadline to submit the AMCAS is, let's say, June 1st, that's the first day you want to hit the submit button and you want to have all of your letters ready, I would tell my letter writers that their deadline is, for example, May 15th. So that's 15 days before my actual deadline. Because sometimes people forget, people get super busy, things come up in life. So make sure you're giving them a false deadline that is maybe a few weeks, earlier than your actual deadline. So if something goes wrong in their life or you know they're just late by accident or because they're super busy, they still can give it to you and you don't have to rush last minute or the night before and have a freak out. Third thing about timing, the best thing that you can do is when you ask these writers to write you a letter, you should provide them with all of the documentation and instructions that they need in order to be successful. 
The easier that you make this process for them, the better of a letter that you will get and less stressful it will be for you and for them. So if this means you need to go and have a meeting with them to talk through what you want them to write, or you need to give them your CV or your resume or your personal statement, or what schools you specifically want to apply to. Give them as much information as you can to make sure that it is a success for both of you. Now, the next thing we need to address is who do you ask and how do you ask them? Well, basically, there's this ongoing debate. Should I get five letters, three letters, 10 letters? Now, the AMCAS application allows you to get up to 10 letters. Does that mean you should get 10 letters? Absolutely not. I personally experienced three to five letters is the best thing that you can do because you can get three to five good letter writers that have experience with you from different perspectives and they can write quality letters for you rather than oversaturating and having you know three good letters but then having seven bad letters that does not do you any good so what we want to focus on is quality over quantity now think about this, if let's say I ask the president of the University of Harvard to write me a letter just because I called him up and I said, hey, I need a letter to apply to a medical school and he agrees and he writes me a letter, but he doesn't really know me. So what's gonna end up happening is he's either going to write me an average letter or a bad letter and the admissions committee is going to read it and say, wow, this person got a pretty bad letter from somebody in a really high position. So that makes you look even worse than just getting a letter from somebody who is close to you and who knows you really well. It's not about status, it's truly just about someone who can really speak to your true character and give a deeper insight to who you are to the admissions committee. So what I lastly recommend is when you ask a specific person to write a letter for you, is that you ask them to be honest and open if they can actually write you a strong letter of recommendation. Now, if they can't, then that's good because at least you know they're honest with you and you need to go looking elsewhere to get a good letter. From my experience, you should never be asking somebody to write you a letter if you actually are not 100% sure that they know you really well and that they can absolutely 100% write you a very strong letter. You need to make sure that your letter writers are people that have known you over a longer period of time and have seen you function and work in a lot of different environments and can speak to a lot of different qualities and competencies that the admissions committee is curious about. And if you're still unclear as to who you should ask, I'll give you an example of how many people I asked, who I asked, why I asked them, and hopefully that will give you a little bit more of an idea of who would be a good recommender for you. Now, like I said, the MCAS application allows you to submit up to 10 letters of recommendation, which is good. If you want to send different letters to different schools or mix and match, that's a great option, but you should not be sending 10 letters to one school because that will not benefit you. So what I did is I had three to five letter writers. I used three all the time. And then if a specific school asked for some type of employer letter, then I would have two on backup that I could use to simply supplement my three core letters. So my first two letters, I was 100% percent confident that they were the strongest. So my first letter writer was a professor of mine. I applied for an undergraduate summer research program. So when I was in my freshman year, I started doing research with this professor and I did research with this professor from freshman year all the way to senior year. So they knew me in a research capacity. They could speak to that aspect of who I was and what I did in lab and all of the teamwork that I engaged with. But they were also my professor and taught me in a course. So they could also speak to my academics. And I maintained this relationship long-term over those four years. So I knew that this was somebody who knew me at my core and I never doubted that they would write anything but an amazing letter for me. Now, my second letter writer was another professor of mine. They taught me during my sophomore year and I performed really well in their class. And they also taught me during my junior year and during my senior year. So I had taken three classes with this person and because I really enjoyed those courses and did really well, I decided to be a teaching assistant for those courses as I was an upperclassman. So this professor knew me in the academic setting as I was their student, but then they also knew me as a teaching assistant and how I performed and taught others and mentored others as well. So I had no doubt that over those four years, they knew me from the beginning and we built a strong relationship over time and that they would write a really good letter. Now, those were my two academic letters and I knew they were going to be strong. And my third letter was also another core letter. This was written by a doctor. Now, when I was younger, I started seeing this doctor for personal health problems. So I was their patient and they saw me longitudinally over the years. So they had an established relationship with me as a patient. 
And then because they were my doctor, I actually asked multiple times if I could shadow. So I had um, multiple shadowing hours over the span of a few years. So they, this person knew me in two different capacities, one as a patient, um, so that's more of a personal relationship, and then two as a shadowing student. So they could speak to me on a more personal level rather than an academic level. And I thought that having a doctor write me a letter was a really good thing, especially for medical school admissions. Now next, I had two supplemental letters that I kept to the side if I needed and felt like I needed to add to a specific school to send them out to just add more perspective to my narrative and my story. So my fourth letter was also written by a physician. While I was in my undergraduate studies, I studied biomedical engineering and one day this doctor sought out an engineer to help him build a medical device. And so I started working with this doctor on this medical device. So we were basically collaborating and he knew me in that aspect of collaboration, but also teamwork and being an engineer and trying to build something and critically thinking through problems. But then I also really worked well with this person. So I asked if I could shadow them. So I observed them over the span of a few months to a year. So they knew me in two different aspects as somebody they collaborated with, but also somebody who shadowed them. So once again, I felt like this was a good supplement outside of academia. And finally, my fifth letter writer, there are some schools that might ask for a letter from an employer. So when I was in my freshman year of undergrad, I started working for a tutoring center and I worked there as a grader and tutor from my freshman year all the way until I graduated college. So I asked my employer to write me a letter of recommendation. And this is somebody who saw me evolve in the workplace. I started off just as a grader and tutor, but over time they saw that my performance was really good. They started valuing my work and my input and I started training training other people and also managing the, the practice and the tutoring and organizing other employees. So I kind of evolved into a leadership position and I knew that my employer could really speak to those qualities as well. If you can see there's one common pattern in all of my letters, I would say is that I had multiple points of interaction with these people over a long period of time. So they knew me in multiple capacities and functions and environments rather than just one and were able to speak to a facet and create a narrative of who I was, what my values and beliefs were and how I've worked with others. If you stayed all the way to the end, thank you. I hope you found this helpful. And if you want to stay tuned for more tips, how to apply to med school and so much more, make sure you hit the like subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.